One of the most charismatic wrestlers of all time, Hulk Hogan is one of the men who helped transform the world of professional wrestling. But despite all his success, Hogan has a somewhat controversial reputation regarding his truthfulness. So, today we are going to look at the 12 times Hulk Hogan was caught lying. But first, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of the amazing videos we'll be releasing. Hogan claimed that Michael Jackson was backstage during this event, suggesting that the King of Pop was a wrestling fan and wanted to watch closely. However, there is no concrete evidence to support this claim. No photos, videos, or testimonies from other people present at the event corroborate Hogan's story. Furthermore, Michael Jackson and Hulk Hogan are not known to have had a close or significant relationship. In fact, there are no documented records of Jackson attending wrestling events, which raises even more doubts about the truthfulness of Hogan's story. Another one of Hulk Hogan's fantastic stories involves none other than the king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley. Hogan claimed that Elvis was a huge fan of his, a Hulkamaniac as his followers are known. However, this claim is easily refuted by a simple timeline of events. Elvis Presley passed away on August 16, 1977, long before Hulk Hogan became a prominent figure in the world of wrestling. Hogan began to gain notoriety in the early 1980s. Therefore, it is impossible for Elvis Presley to have been a fan of Hogan since he was not alive to witness Hogan's rise to stardom. This temporal discrepancy clearly debunks Hogan's claim, once again demonstrating the wrestler's tendency to tell exaggerated or fabricated stories to add a touch of grandeur to his own legend. In one of his stories, Hogan claimed that Mike Tyson, the legendary boxer, was afraid to work with him. According to Hogan, Tyson canceled a program with him in the WWF, now WWE, after losing a boxing match and refused to collaborate with Hogan in WCW due to this fear. Hogan claimed there was a planned program in the WWF with Mike Tyson, but Tyson canceled it after a boxing defeat. However, there are no records confirming the existence of a specific program involving Hogan and Tyson in the WWF. Mike Tyson made a historic appearance at WrestleMania 14 in 1998, working alongside Stone Cold Steve Austin and Shawn Michaels, but this participation did not involve Hogan in any way. Therefore, the idea that Tyson canceled a program with Hogan due to a boxing defeat has no factual basis. Hogan's claim that Tyson was afraid to work with him in WCW also lacks any evidence. Tyson never appeared in WCW and there are no records or indications that a collaboration between the two was discussed or seriously considered. And of course, we cannot forget that Mike Tyson is widely recognized for his courage and intimidating presence, both in boxing and other arenas, making Hogan's story even harder to believe. Hogan claimed that he was considered for the position of bassist in Metallica. According to him, the band approached him to join them during the departure of bassist Cliff Burton who tragically died in a bus accident in 1986. However, Metallica members have refuted this claim multiple times. In interviews, the band members, including drummer Lars Ulrich, stated that Hogan was never considered for the bassist position and that his story has no basis. They even expressed surprise at Hogan's claim, categorically denying any involvement with him. Hogan also claimed that he was invited to play bass for the Rolling Stones, he suggested that the band considered his inclusion during a period of lineup changes. However, the members of the Rolling Stones and their representatives have also denied this claim. Hogan made a series of statements about how his platinum blonde hair and muscular look were more important than any other skill in wrestling. He even claimed that his appearance was so impactful that it helped build an immediate connection with the audience, significantly contributing to his success. While Hogan's look certainly contributed to his personal brand and image in wrestling, many believe that his stories about the importance of his appearance were largely exaggerated to promote his personal marketing. And after all, he isn't wrong to promote himself, is he? The rivalry between Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant is one of the most legendary in WWE history. However, the stories surrounding this rivalry have been greatly exaggerated, particularly by Hogan. At WrestleMania 3, held in 1987 at the Pontiac Silverdome in Michigan, Hulk Hogan performed a remarkable body slam on Andre the Giant, who weighed about 500 pounds. This moment is often highlighted as one of the greatest feats of strength in wrestling history, 
partly due to Andre's impressive size and the dramatic execution of the slam. Hogan frequently describes the body slam as a heroic feat that required superhuman strength, often portraying it as a moment of great physical and emotional difficulty. While the feat is indeed impressive, the technique involved in the body slam was adjusted to ensure that Hogan could lift his opponent with relative safety. Andre actively assisted in the movement, positioning his body in a way that allowed Hogan to lift and slam him with less difficulty than it might appear at first glance. Hogan claimed that he was responsible for bringing together Cindy Lauper, Rick Derringer, and other musicians to create music for WWE. He alleged that he actively participated in the re-recording of several songs and directly contributed to the success of the albums, The Wrestling Album, and Piledriver. Cindy Lauper, Rick Derringer, and other artists were involved in the albums and WWE promotional events, but their collaboration was not directly attributed to Hogan. For instance, Cindy Lauper had a significant partnership with WWE, helping to elevate the company's profile in the mainstream. But this collaboration was more the result of a marketing campaign planned by WWE rather than a personal contribution from Hogan. Hogan frequently claimed to have discovered several successful wrestlers, including The Undertaker, Big Show, and Kevin Owens, suggesting that he played a crucial role in introducing these figures to the world of professional wrestling. In reality, The Undertaker was promoted and developed by various other professionals and the wrestling company he worked for before joining WWE, with his iconic character created and developed by Vince McMahon and his creative team. In the case of Big Show, his discovery and promotion were handled by Eric Bischoff and others in WCW, not by Hogan. And lastly, Kevin Owens was primarily promoted by promoters and executives in WWE. Hogan often spoke about how he was the driving force behind the rock and wrestling movement of the 1980s, suggesting that his presence and popularity were responsible for turning wrestling into a global phenomenon. The rock and wrestling connection was a milestone in wrestling history, helping to transform WWE into a global phenomenon. While Hogan was an important part of this transformation and was a central figure in promoting the movement, he was not the only force responsible for its success. Hulk also claimed that he fought at Wembley Stadium and met a Make-A-Wish child backstage who passed away during the show, which supposedly inspired the song Hulkster in Heaven. However, these claims do not match reality. The most famous WWE event held at Wembley Stadium was SummerSlam 1992, and Hogan was absent from the company at the time of this event. There are no records of Hogan having fought at Wembley in any other event. The song Hulkster in Heaven was indeed written in tribute to a child named Troy, who was a fan of Hogan and was ill. Troy passed away, and the song was Hogan's way of honoring him. However, there is no evidence that Hogan's story is related to an event at Wembley Stadium or that the song was inspired by a specific experience at that location. Hogan frequently refers to various moments in his career as the pinnacle of his trajectory, often attributing these moments exclusively to his own skills and charisma. A notable example is his participation in the film Rocky III and his friendship with Sylvester Stallone. Hogan often highlights his role in the film as a crucial point for his popularity suggesting that his presence was key to the film's success and to the increase in his fame. In the film, Hogan played the character Thunderlips, a wrestling fighter who faces Rocky Balboa, portrayed by Sylvester Stallone. Hogan's appearance in the film was undoubtedly a significant milestone in his career, helping to boost his visibility outside the wrestling world and attracting the attention of a broader audience. While it was an important event, the narrative that he was the main reason for the film's success is exaggerated. The film was a big hit for several reasons, and Hogan's contribution was just one part of the whole. In 1983, Hogan claimed that during a match against Antonio Inoki, he delivered such a powerful blow that Inoki was seriously injured, and the situation was so severe that he had to perform a resuscitation maneuver to save Inoki's life. However, despite trying to portray himself as a hero, there are no witnesses or documented accounts that confirm Hogan's version of the incident. Additionally, Inoki, an extremely respected figure in wrestling, has never confirmed the story. But despite Hulk Hogan proclaiming himself the greatest wrestler of all time with the confidence of a peacock in front of a mirror, the truth is that the success of wrestling is the result of the hard work of many. 
while Hogan continues to tell his exaggerated stories, the rest of the wrestling world smiles and knows that in reality, the ring is big enough for many heroes. After all, if wrestling were a pizza, Hogan would just be a slice. And who doesn't love a whole pizza, right? So, which of these stories told by Hulk Hogan do you find the funniest? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button and share it with your friends. See you in the next one.